HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, Hiller Volleyball and Football continue on in postseason play. The American Legion Post 202 hosted the annual Veterans Day ceremony and Matt Clark will fill you in with the latest HCAM programming with our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. For the third year, Hopkinton High School will host a top of the hill ceremony as they welcome three new members into the Hopkinton High School Hall of Fame. The class of 2017 includes Mike Whalen from the class of 1968, Scotty Mackin from the class of 1982, and Sarah Ellum from the class of 1998. Greyhound Friends Executive Director Louise Coleman is heading to trial for felony animal cruelty charges on November 28th. International Animal Rights Organization PETA submitted a letter to the District Attorney's Office in favor of prosecution. You can view more on this story at our website, hcam.tv. At this past week's planning board meeting, in addition to a public hearing regarding Whisper Ridge and 143 Spring Street, they also continued the public hearing about 147 Lumber Street. The site developers presented changes to the proposed plan that were made since last meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. My name is Greg Carey, the Director of Real Estate Permitting with Clean Energy Collective. Next to me is Ben Tricco, property owner at 147 Lumber Street. Also with me tonight is Doug Carton, project manager with Clean Energy Collective, Rich Kleiman from Kleiman Energy, and Stacy Minahan and John Bensley from Fields and Thomas. Um, since our last hearing, we, uh, we uh, obviously got together and listened to some of the suggestions and comments that were made by the planning board members. We went back to the drawing board and looked at how we can improve our site plan and our project. We've made a number of changes which we think um, you'll, you'll like. We think results in a better project. And with your permission, I'd like Stacy and John to go through some of those changes. Yes. Stacy Minahan with Fields and Thomas. Um, so I'll uh, run through the changes and of course if you have any questions. Um, so as Greg mentioned, uh, CEC took a, a very detailed evaluation of, of the layout of the solar panels um, and the proposed project. And there were really three areas um, that were revised, three categories. Um, and I think at least one of them was discussed before, two of them really, but screening, um, stormwater management, and then wildlife habitat. So with regard to the solar panel layout and the screening, um, along the entire easterly portion of the array, you see the northern portion of the easterly array here, but <coughs> that entirely easterly, entire easterly extent, um, CEC was able to pull all of the panels outside of the 100-foot buffer zone, so further from the uh, abutting properties. And the proposed screening was also extended to the northern limit of work, so there is now a full um, proposed screening of the Green Giant Arbor Beatty. I believe the board had also asked for some consideration as to it including different species and so eastern red cedar um, can also be mixed in and that's been added to the plans mm -hmm. as well. So some significant screening proposed and then pulling the panels back along that easterly array. I think at the <coughs> last hearing or hearing before a stormwater bond was discussed so CEC has identified a $10,000 10-year $10 stormwater bond um, with regards to stormwater management system. There were no other issues outstanding with regard to stormwater management. And then we also made several revisions, largely in response to feedback from the Conservation Commission. 
to address wildlife habitat concerns. One of them was moving those panels outside of the buffer zone along this easterly array, incorporating the screening plantings, which also provide habitat, um, creating within the 100-foot buffer zone that would be disturbed a pollinator meadow habitat with a conservation wildlife seed mix, um, and also clusters of high, val high habitat value shrub plantings interspersed throughout areas within the buffer zone that are not constrained by stormwater management areas. Um, we incorporated a double gate between the westerly array and the easterly array to allow a gap, essentially, the fence can <coughs> that larger wildlife can pass through there. As we discussed before, the fence will be lifted off the ground for a smaller wildlife passage. <coughs> and I believe that's it, actually. We continue to meet all of the Conservation Commission um, required setbacks with regard to the wetlands. Overall, the work in the buffer zone was reduced um, by just under 13,000 square feet over the original plan that was filed. So we were able to reduce impacts. You, you may want to um, also uh, point out the um, alternative um, screening uh, that, that we're proposing, the red maple. Oh, the eastern yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so, yeah, so along that easterly um, array, the edge that was originally um, Green Giant Arbor Reading, mm -hmm. every three to four we're proposing to intersperse with eastern red cedar as well to add some additional wildlife habitat value and just a little bit more diversity. The Hopkinton Hillers football team took on Milton in the sectional finals last Friday. The winner advances on to play in the state semifinals. Here's how last Friday's game went. The Hopkinton Hillers taking on the Milton Wildcats for the South Division IV sectional title. It was a cold, cold night, but the Hillers came ready to play. Temperatures in the 30s, wind chill making it feel like single digits. Right at the beginning of the game, things went pretty well for Milton, however. Straight ahead dive up to Charles Smith is gone right up the middle, Don. He had a big hole up the middle and nobody's gonna catch this young man. First offensive snap of the game, Smith Charles finds a huge hole in the defense and takes it right up the middle, 72 yards for the touchdown. The extra point made it seven to nothing, Milton. Later in the quarter, Hiller is facing a fourth and 12 and going for it. Ryan Kelleher connects with Will Abbott for the 15th time of the season. It was a 26 yard strike and the Hillers tie it up at seven. Abbott wasn't done there in the second quarter. Abbott punches it in for a seven yard touchdown run on the end around. Hillers up 13 to seven, extra point no good. On the ensuing kickoff, this happens. <laughs> Brendan Kelly with the kick, it's a Oh, oh, 40. Number 40. Crowley oh, 40. overruns it at number 17, Woodley. Oh, he fumbles oh, the ball! And the Hillers recover the ball at the 11 yard line! Hillers recover and try to take advantage of the opportunity, facing a third and 25 after a defensive sack by Milton. Kelleher finds a wide open target down the field. Yeah, Kelleher back to pass. He's looking downfield. He's looking, he throws, he's got hit. And Abbott was wide open with three guys around him. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. But Kelleher got hit as he threw a wobbly pass. He almost thought it might have been picked, but he was right there all by himself. A huge catch by Will Abbott. The ball is marked around the five after the reception. And then Hebert takes it to the one. And then Kelleher takes it from there and finds touchdown land with a one-yard plunge. After the touchdown, Hillers go for two. So here we go. Out of the shotgun, he's rolling right, rolling right, rolling right. He had somebody, and it's Got him. caught. Abbott. Mr. Abbott. And who does Kelleher go to? None other than his favorite target, Will Abbott. Hillers go up 21 to seven. After a scoreless third quarter, Milton found the end zone to make it 21 13, but the Hillers had a response. He's second guess all day long. Ebert straight up the middle and he gets loose and he there got he a goes. touchdown. Touchdown Ebert with uh, 49 seconds to go from the 
18-yard line. That'll wrap it up, Don. That's the nail in the coffin. Connor Hebert shoots right up the gut for a 27-yard touchdown run. The extra point is good, and the Hillers lead 28 to 13. The game would end by a final of 28 to 19. Milton tagged one on right at the end of regulation, but by that time it was too late. The Hillers take home the South Division IV sectional title and advance to the state semifinals. Hopkinton now 10 and 0 on the season and will next play North champion Melrose. Saturday, November 18th, 2 p.m. at Weymouth High School. Congratulations, Hopkinton. Congratulations to Hiller football. One more win, and they will have a chance to play at Gillette Stadium on Saturday, December 2nd. Coming up next on HCAM News, Hiller's volleyball attempted to earn a spot in the state finals. We'll take you to the annual American Legion Post 202 Veterans Day services at the Hopkinton Senior Center. And Matt Clark has your HCAM Insider. You're tuned into HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Join the Hopkinton High School lacrosse team on Thanksgiving for a fun, family-friendly, approximately two-and-a-half-mile turkey trot around the high school sports complex to burn some calories before the big meal. We'll have snacks, the Amp Radio Street team will be there for entertainment, and we encourage you to wear Hiller's colors to support the team. With the race over before 8.30 a.m., there will be plenty of time to support the Hiller football team in the annual Thanksgiving Day Classic versus Ashland. Proceeds support the boys lacrosse team. Tickets are $25 for adults and $15 for children. Sign up at the link below. Welcome back to HCAM News. The Hiller girls volleyball team is currently competing in their first season in the Division I playoff bracket, and so far the Hillers have swept through their first five matches. Here is a look at the tremendous run by the Hillers. Jess to Angie, just going down the middle. Nice swing from Ivy. Nice put away for the 25th point in the first set, so Hopkinton takes that first set, 25 to eight, girls are gonna sweep. Back set to Ansi, tipped. There it is. And net violation again from the Highlanders, so. I'll give Bella the point there, too. Okay. <laughs> so Hopkinton takes the second set, 25 to four. The girls are gonna switch sides. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Angie, Ashley, it's going over. Oh, Lydia keeps it alive. Angie, back to Bella. And Bella puts it away. Pillars take the third set, 25 to four for a 3-0 sweep of Jess, Angie, outside to Allison. And that's there it, you go. nice swing from Lorette. And uh, Hopkinton takes the first set, 25-13. Lorette back to close out this second set. Nice serve. Allison, Mia, outside to Gilbert, and that's oh. long. Allison gets to that, Mia goes outside to Gilbert, and nice put go. away, good swing from Amanda. Gonna be trouble, girls will have a free ball here. Allison gets it to Mia, quick pushover. She telegraphed it. Oh, good uh. reflexes from Ivy. Wow. And that's it. Hopkinson takes the second set, 26-24. Marino gets that cross court. See and that's it. They do it. Hopkinson takes the third set, 25-18. Still set point. Short serve, handled by Ivy. Nice bump. Rachel, Angie, see if Zale can put this away. There it is. There it is. Set number one is in the books. Girls take that 25 to 20. Gilbert at the service line. 
Hopkins it up 24 23. This is the biggest seesaw set I've seen all season. Oh, and yeah. that's a way to do it, Amanda. <laughs> An ace to close out the second set. Jess gets to that. Angie, back set to Zale. Amanda, Angie, Lorette, block, and that's yes. it, folks. Hopkinton defeats Concord Carlisle. Three sets to zero. Push over Allison. Outside to Jenna. Good. Nice hustle from the girls. Lorette, quick pop over. Westford goes outside, blocked. And that's it. Great block from Sarah Pusco. And that takes the first set, 25-15. Uh, Pillars taking that one. The girls are going to switch sides. Blocked, and that's it. Sarah Pusco with the fourth block of the set. Hopkinton takes that second set 25 to three for a 2-0 lead. Back set, tipped. Allison is there. Angie goes outside to Amanda. Oh, great hit from Amanda. Another ace for Grabmeyer. And that's it. We're at match point. 24 10. Hopkinton fans are on their feet. And that's it. Hopkinton is the Central West Division I champions. They're going to move on to play in the state semifinal match. And there's D. King with the Central West trophy. Down the line, there's an ace to take the first set. Great serve from Rachel. Hopkinton takes that first set 25 to 19. The girls are going to switch sides. Grab Meyer. And there's a block. Kept alive. Lorette settles under that. Angie, back set. Zale, great power. Should be a free ball. And a net violation. There's the second set. Hopkinton takes that 25 17. Oh, that's the match. Shattuck wow. a little too much juice on that one. A little too much mustard, I like to say. Yeah. There so you go. Hopkinton takes the uh, third set, 25-19 for a 3-0 sweep. Turn to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HKMTV, for highlights and full game broadcasts of playoff Hiller football, girls volleyball, and so much more. This past Saturday was Veterans Day, a day that throughout the country, we celebrate and honor those who sacrificed everything for our freedom and the great country we live in. Here is a look at the annual American Legion Post-202 ceremony at the Hopkinton Senior Center. Thank you for your lifelong dedication to this country, your fellow veterans, and the Hopkinton community. To all those who have served, your tenacity and selfless spirit, your agape, are things that the rest of us must continue to strive towards in our everyday lives, but particularly in the way that we repay in whatever small way we can all that you have sacrificed for us. Thank you for safeguarding us, both in our ideal form and our real one. Thank you for your service. Good morning. Good morning, thanks, Liz, for that. To many veterans, our nation was important enough to endure long separation from their families, missed birthdays, holidays, live in harsh conditions, and even lose their lives. What is common throughout all generations of veterans is the absolute insistence that the gratitude shown them truly belongs to their fallen brothers and sisters, 
who pay the ultimate sacrifice. Ironically, it is those who did give their lives, never wore the title of veteran. Only survivors become veterans. Some died on foreign soil and gave up the chance to be fathers, mothers, and grandparents. They gave up everything for their country, and all we can do is remember. But just to remember seems inadequate. Hence, we created Veterans Day, a day which we can actively express our gratitude. Today's battles are not just with the enemies of our nation, but the enemies of all good people of the earth. This country's military is combating evil in every corner of the planet. Yes, evil or the devil, whatever you name you give it, must exist, is really the only explanation for the atrocities and crimes against humanity that we can all view in this modern era because of technology. History has shown us that isolationism and inaction to these inhuman offenses is, is a mistake. The leaders of our country should realize that with all our resources, we have a moral obligation to take up the mantle and defend all the innocent and just people of the earth against the misguided zealots. Okay. I believe that this country's young men and women are certainly ready to defend our way of life and the freedoms we enjoy as the generations came before them did. Remember, this nation will remain the land of the free as long as it is the home of the brave. 230 years ago, our founding fathers were composing our Constitution, and they wanted to create a living document. They were certainly visionaries, but they could not have imagined the current lifestyle and modern technology we have become accustomed to here in 2017. James Madison and the other contributors valued free speech above all rights. And consequently, the first change or first amendment to our constitution was the freedom to express and communicate ideas. I would not want to live or raise a family in a country that would, not, that would prohibit the right of free speech. Presently, there are those who cite this First Amendment as they are expressing dissatisfaction with our government by kneeling during the national anthem. Yes, it is perfectly legal to show disrespect. And many have given their lives to protect this and other rights our nation enjoys. Certainly, social injustice exists, and it needs to be, needs to be addressed and corrected. It seems that frustration with this issue has led some to call attention to this situation in hopes of resolving the problem. However, the path to change is shorter when positive steps are taken and respect is maintained. I say to those who use our flag, our Pledge of Allegiance, and our national anthem as props to call attention to themselves and their issues to hear this. Do not expect others to be sympathetic and respectful of your beliefs and concerns if you show disrespect to their values. Now moving along. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is HCAM's Promotions Coordinator, Matt Clark. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, November 17th at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts chat with Sabine St. Pierre about her business, Sabine's Cuisine, on a new episode of Hopkinton Coffee Break. She's sort of recommending these particular She's recommending things. these. These all go great with turkey. Oh. So these are your main course wines. Okay. So this yeah. one that you have is cherry tart. It actually is like biting into a cherry pie. Ooh. But it goes Ooh. very cherry well. You can dessert, noir. but it yeah, goes very yeah. well <laughs> with uh, the turkey. Oh. On Monday, November 20th at 7.30 p.m., Dr. Kathy McLeod takes a look into the construction and preparations being made for the new Marathon Elementary School building on a new episode of Highlights from the Hill. We love Center School. You know, it's the heart of this little town. The kids need newer amenities. 
Uh, it needs to be brighter, like you've mentioned. Um, and honestly, every kid, my kids that went through center school, they loved it. They loved their teachers. They loved the building. It was a cute little schoolhouse downtown. But I think we really need this. And I think um, we're all going to benefit from it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it it's, it's exciting. And at 8 p.m., the town gathers in a public forum on the use and management of the town athletic fields on a new HCAM TV special. We know there was a recent uh, vandalism <laughs> incident at uh, Field 13. Uh, you know, a field that we know that there was a huge investment made at over the summer. I think people are wondering what the status of the repair cost and then the plan for future prevention. On Tuesday, November 21st at 6.45 p.m., the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Varsity Football vs. Milton and the 2017 Powder Puff Football Games will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website to keep track of the current Hiller playoff runs and also to stay up to date with events in our community. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. HCAM is supported by our viewers and by Blackstone Valley Wealth Management, providing highly personalized financial planning, wealth management, and customized solutions through transparent, unbiased advice. Visit us at BlackstoneValleyWealth.com.